How was the weekend, Rodrigo? Did you have time to rest, to think? Oh, Eti, um, well, I, I traveled with my family and we, we, we went to, to visit uh, a friend of mine. Uh, he's an old man. He has 80, 80 years old and he's, uh, how can I say, not so well, but he's a very, very deep, uh, we have a very deep friendship and we talk uh, a lot and beautiful things happens in this in this travel this and it was it was a great time it was yesterday thank you so much for sharing your experience with us and do you have any questions that you would like to ask before we start and look into the whiteboard questions on your mind on your heart i i i i just asked uh, the whiteboard uh, right now i i just open the whiteboard mm -hmm. board right now and well let um i i actually i have a um, a question but i prefer at the moment listen what you prepare to us and then during the class if if fit uh, i can i can ask something um but i, I prefer that we started with uh, with we prepare with your your content thank you so here we have on the whiteboard two texts one of them is from the book of deuteronomy chapter 34 those the verses that are here on the board they are ending or summarizing the fifth big book of moses excuse me and the new from Genesis are opening Bereshit. So in Simchat Torah, what happens is that we complete the reading of the Torah, the fifth book, and immediately we start with the first to say there is no stop. So you see on the whiteboard the few verses. Yes, Eti, I can get it, uh, Deuteronomy 34 and Genesis chapter 1. Yes. Can you read for us, please, the few verses here? Yes, Deuteronomy or Genesis? Eti. Deuteronomy, and in, please continue immediately with Genesis with no stop, oh. like it's one text. Oh. Okay, Eti. Um, so, morning, Deuteronomy yes. chapter... Yes, yes. Chapter 34, verse 7. Yes. And Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping in the mo morning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, wisdom. For Moses had laid his hand upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there had not arisen a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses who the Lord knew face to face. In all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land and in all the might hand and in all the great terror which Moses wrote in the sight of all Israel. Now, continue immediately. No, stop. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now the earth was unformed and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. 
And God said, let there be lights. And there was lights. Thank you so much, Rodrigo. And good morning, Felipe and Fernando here on YouTube. Thank you for joining us today. What happens to you, Rodrigo, when you immediately continue from reading about Moses, the passing away of Moses, and immediately you start with Genesis? What happens to you in your heart when you immediately switch, no stop? Uh, it, it's a, uh, how can I say, it's a strange uh, feeling because I, I never uh, did this before and it was amazing because uh, the sense of con continuity, continuous, um, it's, it's a very, very um, different feeling. Uh, read Genesis 1 as the continuation of something because, uh, well, I'm always read Genesis 1 as the, the beginning, as the start point. And now, in this way, um, this verse was in the middle of the test. In the, uh, I, I, I read something before. Uh, so it's a strange feeling, but a sense of uh, continuality. Uh, uh, of uh, How can I say? Uh, well, um, there is no, no ending, no beginning. The, the infinity, the infinity, the sensation of... Uh, um, the infinite. Excellent. Do you know? Yes, it is beautiful because look at the letters. The last letter of Deuteronomy is Lamed. And the first of Genesis is Bet. When we read, like you read now, what happens? The Torah becomes what? Lamed. Ends with Lamed and starts with Bet. And then we have Lev. Lev is a heart. Like the heart never pumps and enables us life, also the Torah should not never stop. Meaning there is completion and immediately beginning, no pause, infinite going, infinite life. Also for people, for us, if something happens, people lose job, move apartment, move to new life, to a new country, not to be sorry, immediately immediately continue with the present with with what there is immediately it's a very good practice because what it does it keeps us mobile in the mind in heart and very tuned with life the life need go on yes the flow yes the flow yes yes not to hesitate a moment and I was saying it once in the synagogue because now we can see this in the text on the whiteboard what happens is this is a really a challenge a challenge in the synagogue because it's like on scroll so immediately somebody has to prepare a new scroll because it's it's impossible to scroll so you end one scroll at the lament and they open someone or already prepares a new scroll with a bed and there's a heart immediately continue not to stop also again if we have crises and all of us going for crises and moments in life during the day d during the weeks months and years not to stop continue continue with the next thing with the next song with the next book with the next step not to get stuck it's a very very good lesson to all of us question so far felipe felipe is writing there are a few letters in Israel and then Bereshit that uh, they are the same. What could we say about this? Israel and Bereshit. Yes, there is a beautiful lore about it. It appears the questions that Philip arises at the moment. There are mutual letters, shared letters between Israel. Israel and Bereshit. Yes. There is four letters in common. Four letters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes to say, and there's the Lord that says why the Torah starts with Bereshit, Bet Reshit to beginnings because Israel was 
prime בראשית, ראש, was Israel, the tree of life, was at the head of the creator. Yes, the four letters are ראשי, my head, my head, or יוד, the potential is ראש, is a head. The ten spheres are head, basically. Of course, we can create more um, words from those four letters. Yes. But this is this midrash that you ask for, Felipe, appears in many Hebrew books. Why the Torah starts with Bereshit? Yes. Because ins- inside of Bereshit, we can found uh, Israel as the rush. Right? Yes, yes, Israel is the rush. Yes. Israel is basically a summary for the tree of life. Because if we summarize all the first letters... Of the ten spheres, it gives us the same value as Israel, which is five, four, and one. This is the value of all ten spheres in the tree of life. The abbreviation, the first letters of each sphere, they come together as 541. Yes. Questions. Rodrigo, or thoughts that comes to your mind? I, yes? Oh, please go ahead, Ed, please. I would like to focus in one verse. I mean, a few things are coming into mind because there's the relation between Moses and Joshua and And then also there is a seal of his name in Genesis. So let's start with his seal. Look at the three first words of Genesis. Bereshit, bara Elohim. The three first words that opens Genesis. Look at the last letter of each word. What do they create together? Last letter of each word. The letter Tav, Aleph, and Mem. Yes. I'll change the color that people could see. What those three letters create together? Which word? You can play with the order, but they have a meaning. Emet. Very good. The truth. Very good. Emet. Truth. Very good. Emet. And Emet. This is one, four, and four. And if we have a mirror picture, this is one, four, four. 441 is the value of Emet, or a mirror picture of Emet is Adam. Adam. Please pay attention to the ending letters. This is an exercise. This is what Kabbalists and people who wrote the Zohar used to do. It's all about letters and mathematics. They find the relations between letters and numbers and The numbers, misparim in Hebrew, misparim, they also mesaparim. The number also tells us a story. And this is how they, all their writing, where do their writing comes from? From this, what we do, the exercises that we do in our conversations. Yes. Yes, also Felipe says Tam and Innocent. Also, this also exists, Tam and Innocent. Tam and as Innocent. Very good, Felipe. I remember that Ruth was, uh, was reading for us from Song of Songs, how the Lord relates to us, his beloved one, and he says a uh, four words my sister my wife uh, 
my dove and my innocent. My innocent is the highest uh, word that Song of Songs uses. Thank you so much, Felipe. <coughs> Questions? Rodrigo. Uh, and it's interesting that, that this uh, three letters appears in the first few words of the Torah because we get the, the first letter, the last letter, and a man that we could consider the middle, the middle letter. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting that uh, all the alphabet uh, here, uh, we get the first, we get the, the last, and we get the, the middle term, and, and, and all of these letters appears in the first three words the last letter of the first two words of torah i i think it's interesting the way that this appear here here what you just discovered now rodrigo this uh, revelation on this revelation many chapters uh, of the zohar were written what is the aim of those who wrote the Zohar? And the Zohar was a correspondence between many people reading the same text from different angles. The more they read, the more they develop different angles and different perspectives. And the more they converse with each other, the more they able to penetrate more and more to a deeper layer of the text. Not just to a word as a word or a word as an image or a word as that has numerical value but each letter so the beginning the abbreviation I mean the beginning of words the ending and sometimes and sometimes and Felipe you're a musician yeah sometimes there are syncopa meaning what does it mean so far we have shown like order Take the abbreviation, take the first letter of each word and try to find a meaning. And many, many writers of the Zohar do it. And sometimes it's the ending letters. But there's also syncopa, meaning jumping or skipping or springing. We can take the Hebrew text and skip with no order, so to speak, beginning or end, and skip between the letters and find a new rhythm and find in a new music maybe Felipe and Fernando with the music because sometimes when the music comes to us sometimes we hear a certain music in the mind and suddenly between the spaces of the notes that we are currently hearing in our mind comes another line with, with new creation, with new music. It is, if I can make uh, equivalent, it is almost the same. So there is a text, but beyond this current text or beyond what we hear at the moment in our mind, revealed text, there is a hidden text or hidden music or hidden notes or hidden concert, which asks us to listen to him. This is it. Questions? Rodrigo, questions about Joshua, about Moses, about the relations between them? At, in fact, um, I have a question. I don't know. It's, it's not uh, exactly... Uh, about we are talking about, but I remember when you mentioned uh, that Israel, um, the 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 word Israel is corresponding to the the value of the the sef, the sefirot the five hundred and forty one is the same value of the first letters of the sefirot, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we we have to consider. Uh, not Chesed, but Gedula, right? True, true. Gedula instead of Chesed. Yes, true. 
Yes. Yes, and uh, and I I just try to to understand uh, why uh, sometimes uh, Hesed uh, is called Gedula, and and what this uh, um, how can I say what we can um, understand from this, and I remember at um, the Book of Chronicles uh, we have the the a prayer from David. In, in the chapter 29, when David was almost died, and in that prayer, in the chapter 29, <clears throat> we, we get the name of the Sephirotes uh, he mentioned in his, in his prayer. And there, at the verse 11, appears Gedulah, and Vera Gevura, and Vera Tiferet, and Vera Netzah, uh, and not appears Hesed, but mm-hmm. Gedula. And I try to fit this uh, why uh, David mentioned in Chronicles chapter 29 and in verse 11, uh, not Hesed, but Gedula, Vera Gevura, Vera Tiferet, Vera Netza, Vera I know it's not a not, uh, not, uh, a question precisely about what we are discussing, but when you mention the Israel and the 541, immediately I remember Chronicles uh, chapter 29, and there is, I don't know, I don't know if there is something here to talk about. Yes, there is, there is. Chesed is grace. Grace is something that infinitely um, expenses. It's, it's unlimited. And the gedula, gedula, in English, greatness, can describe the power of grace. When we receive, there is a, a song, I think in North America, they sing Amazing Grace or Saying Grace. This is something that we don't have to work for it. This is something that is naturally given to us, to the whole creation, grace. So sometimes, sometimes we find it as chesed, starts with chesed. And sometimes we find the, the expression of unlimited love as gedula, from gadol, from greatness. And chronicle and chronicles that you mentioned is the source is the source for this calculation. That's right. It's something that has no limitation. Both words, chesed and gedula, express non-limitation. Like Abraham, he never stopped. He never stopped. Lech lecha, he never stopped. Continue to walk all the time with God. So we have here chesed. Sometimes we find this as chesed. Chesed el kol hayom. The grace of God is during the whole day. It's light, which is not limited. Sometimes we find it as Gedula. Yes? Yeah, but, but there's a quality at it. There, there is a difference, uh, I believe, between grace and... Let's look... Uh, Let's look into it. Chesed, grace is 72. Gedula, what do we have here? 47, maybe. 48, 48. 48. So, 48 is like what? Which word has the value of 48? Moach, moach, mind, mind. Mind, also Jubilee, Yovel, Jubilee also. Also bravery, Chayil, 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 bravery also. Yes? 
also has 48. Yes. This, uh, it's good that you ask about the differences between those two words. Luria says, what is chesed? What is grace? He divides chesed into two parts. Chas, mercy, on the dalet. The dalet is malchut, which is poor. She, she always uh, alone, not connected. So what is grace? Chas, al dalet, he has a mercy for the heavenly kingdom. This is who, what he, why he is giving his grace, to connect with the heavenly kingdom. This is what Luria says. Now, Felipe writes, Lech Lecha is a hundred. This is an important number in Abraham's uh, context since he circumcised himself at 99. This is very, very interesting. Thank you for mentioning it, Felipe. Circumcised, the Zohar uses invented Aramit, Aramic word, Id Gazar, Id Gazar. It gazar, it means to cut it. Let's write it here. It gazar. It, so this is Gimel. It gazar. It gazar, meaning circumcise. The thing is, the interesting relation of the number 99 and 100. Lech Lecha, I have to move into two uh, few kinds of thinking, so please excuse me, I'm trying to go. Lech Lecha, go for yourself. Lech, one is 50, Lech, another one is another 50, Lech Lecha together is 100. And when Abraham asked to circumcise himself, he was 99. This is how we write the word 99. But look what happens if we write the number 99 with a back-to-back -back relation between the two nines. This is 9, and this is another 9, and it looks like scissors, like something that cuts, that separates. And at the age of 99, he was asked to circumcise himself. Why? Why he was asked to circumcise himself? Felipe, Rodrigo, why? The covenant. The covenant, yes. And here we come to Genesis, what Felipe mentioned. God says, go in front of me and be innocent. Tamim, here we have Tam, innocent, and God asked Abraham to be innocent, to walk in front of him innocent, meaning not to go with his own thoughts, with his own self-interest, but to go innocent. Tamim. Tamim. The value of Tamim, innocent, God says to Abraham, go in front of me and be innocent, has the value of 490, like Bethlehem, or like 7 times 7. We can sing human can think whatever he wants the human mind is like um, like a muscle that can run in front of us and give us all kinds of ideas and thought and convince us that our mm. mind is right because this is something that came into us and we go with this with this machine and god says go in front of me and be innocent don't go with your own mind. Limit, limit yourself, be innocent. And this is the covenant. Yes. 
Yes, Rodrigo? No, I think just, just try, try to, try to follow you and thinking about what you said <clears throat> regarding Abraham and the circumcision. So let's go into it. You ask, what is the difference between Gedula, which is greatness, and Chesed? Gedula has the value of 48. Now, innocent, what God asks Abraham to be innocent before he circumcises himself. Tamim, innocent, is 490. Take the zero outside. Do you see the relation between innocent? Yes. Yes? Innocent and Gedula. Yes. Why do why do we as human why Moses brought this perspective of the Jubilee? The Jubilee is what Moses brings with him when he comes down from the mountain with the ten sayings of God. He brings us humans this structure. This is how the world works. This is the system. The system runs seven double seven, and then there's a resting, there's a resets of the worlds. Also, what Moses did with the community of Israel going out of Egypt, Abraham start this idea with himself. This is why we find also in Philon writings and also in other books that the patriarchs or Abraham, Isaac and Jacob kept the Torah before it was given. How could they do it? They were listening to the speech. So Abraham already kept the Jubilee. There, there is an order. There is a heavenly order. Why do, we, why do we have the order of Jubilee? To prevent uh, actions like Cain. That Cain cannot run on the streets forever. There is a stop. 777, what marks Cain is number 7. So we have 7 times 7, 7 times fold. We have 49 and there's a stopper. There's a new order. You can do, cannot do whatever you like. There's a divine order here. So Abraham as a correction of Adam. He circumcised himself. Not to cause what came from Adam is kind to correct Adam Abraham circumcised himself questions Rodrigo, something on your mind that you would like to ask? Right, just just try to, to follow you. I would like us to move a bit to the relations here between Moses and Joshua. There is one verse here, verse 9. Can you please read for us the English? And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hand upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Thank you. 
The English uh, says here, yes, laid his hand upon him. The Hebrew uses the word samach. Samach is like the letter samich. It is like one person, this is his head, this is his shoulder, and another person put his hand on his shoulder and he creates, so to speak, the letter samich. Like when one person stands parallel to another person and puts his hand on the other man's shoulder. So he creates like a cycle, close cycle, or like the letter samich. What does it mean? Samach, lay his hand on, he trusts him, trusts him. The value of Samach, trusts or lay down or the letter Samach in its feeling is 100. 100. Yes. What does it mean? What does it mean? This action between them. This transformation. What does Moses ask to say in his hands? What can we create from the num number 12? Which geometrical form? Or the three, the four, and the five. <laughs> yes, it. yes. He trusts him. This is uh, an expression of trust. Questions, Felipe, Venus, Fernando. <laughs> Felipe says, what is it? Oh, Hamsa, like five. Yes, one hand open. Yes, Samach, he trusts him. It is also, um, with those letters, we can create the word Masach. Masach is a screen or a filter. He trusts him that he could stand in front of Israel because Israel they have complaints and conflicts for the years so he trusts Joshua to be able to stand against Israel and lead them thank you Venus Now, Rodrigo, little question. If Moses laid his hand, hands on Joshua's shoulder, he created the word Samich. The word Samich has the value of 120. We arrange the 12 as 3, 4, 5, as a Pythagoras triangle, which is also what? What this uh, triangle symbolizes the spirit the material the relation the, yes we, we, we also get the the mother the father and the child excellent and what else who has the name that has three four five in his name moses moses, moses. so what does he do by pu pu uh, putting his hand on Joshua's shoulders, he trusts him. He trusts him as a, a new uh, person that can lead the people of Israel, but he also, what? Bless him with his name, three, four, five. He gives him all what he has in this action, everything.
in a way there is no loss here Moses his I would say his duty comes into end but he transfer everything that he has for Joshua and there is no stop there is no lack Now, time for questions. Would you like to look at William Blake's painting of Bereshit, the creation? Do you find it interesting? Yes, yeah, very beautiful painting, I think. He also writes, please pay attention, not just the center, he's also right here on the left. Upper column, let there be light and let there be a firmament and so on. He also writes and draws. Is there something that interests you in this painting? Well, the sixth day of the creation, he, he, he mentioned. So you see, yes. yes? Yes. And inside the picture, we get the angels, I believe, above the picture with wings. And <clears throat> there could be gods. And then we get the sun and the moon, the sun with four horses and the moon with two dragons. Have you seen yeah. one expression like this, that the sun has horses and the moon yeah. has... Yes? We already talked about the, the horses of the, the sun, the, the, the chariots. Mm -hmm. We already discussed about this regarding this top. And below we get Man, I believe, four men and one woman. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask you about the creation of the fourth day as here, William Blake. Can you please read here the words? And God made two great lights, sun and moon. Does it, uh, does the Bible in Hebrew speaks about sun and moon? No, I believe in Genesis. No. So, okay, let's take William Blake's reading of the Bible. What? is the sun in us and what is the moon in us and god created when we read the let's say let's say this is what is right what the bible writes the bible does not write it but let's say what god really creates here i'll bring the verse one second verse 16 one second yes one second you have it Yes. Yes. Do you know how to bring it here to the to the whiteboard? Oh, actually, let me try. I don't know if I can. Okay, I'll try to. Let's see. Yes, one second. It's like few verses. I'll try to bring it. You said 16. Oh, I tried to, to but I don't know if he, I'll try it's because good. it's it's good that you bring this because there are few verses and I would like to bring them together. I, 
I, I try. I found him. Thank you for your note, because you, now I. You. Okay. Uh, didn't I? Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. So there you go. What What did you want to say? No, I just tried to delete my my contribution. Uh, Thank you for 16. for marking the the verse, and I could find it and bring it the a few verses here. So let's do you see the text from Genesis one? Can you read it about the lights? Can you bring can you read the verses about the lights? Yes, verse 14, Genesis 1. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fourth day. Thank you so much. Now, verse 16, And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. What is the great, greater light or great light? The sun. If we look, one second, if we look, introspect human, what is the great light in a human? What is the greater light in us and what is the lesser light in us? Yes, Felipe, I see. Felipe says soul and body. What is the great light in a man? The Spirit of God. Yes. Thank you, Shelton. And what is the lesser light in a man? I'm not sure. Maybe the soul of man? The soul of a man? The soul and the spirit, we can we can consider them as the great light, but the lesser light is is persons on souls. Sometimes uh, we yeah. get into the you know we have all kinds of negative thinking, or sometimes mm -hmm. we find ourselves without ability to act or to do the right thing, or we feel little or discouraged or depressed, suppressed, unmotivated. Yes, this mm. is the lesser, this is the lesser light. This is the moon aspect in us. This is one perspective. Another perspective is that the greater light in us is the ability to speak and to connect via cognitive speech and the lesser light is the one that expresses itself in us when we dream, when we walk, speaks to us uh, in images, a non-rational mind. So we could say that the rational mind in us is the great illuminator and the lesser is the non rational mind a few few perspective to look at it because whatever the bible writes here moses writes here it's within one man it's not about the creation of course the creation is a big thing but it's within us yeah i, I have a question about what you just said at um yes. and, uh, the question is um how does 
how does a man or woman know when their lesser light is in congruence or is in uh, in harmony with the greater light? What are some ways that human beings know when there are when their light is is not working against but working with the the greater light? And also, what are ways in which human beings have have shown the ability to to uh, if you will strengthen the light the lesser light uh, I'm thinking about the scripture that says God's ways are not our ways neither God's thoughts our thoughts as, as far as the heavens are from the earth are God's thoughts from our thoughts so if there's such a wide gulf how do we know when the thoughts that we have are in harmony with, with the thoughts of God if it's to generate spirits uh, to give to relate it just the direction is is uh, from ourselves out to the world with positive positivity this is the greater light and now i don't speak now about the moon in us as a perspective of a dreamer not i don't speak about it now but when a person becomes discouraged and becomes heavy and becomes depressed, he doesn't want to move, he doesn't believe in whatever comes, he sees he sees it in, as a bad sign, he translates it in his mind as a bad s sign or discouraging sign. This is a, it means that the moon or the ashes, because the moon is also considered by as uh, uh, related to the ashes afar, afar to the element of ashes of earth. So when we feel like down and depressed, so and we have those thoughts of discouragement, this is like the ashes or the earth is governing, orif, afar, the nape, or the ashes are governing, and we have to mobilize ourselves, yes, to do something, to act, to dance, to lift the spirit, because um, this heaviness causes us not to move, like to be like stone. So to notice this during the day, there are moments like this, to notice this and immediately to, to, to change yes. the tendency. Mm -hmm. And now I did not speak about dreams because dreams is completely different field for itself. Yeah, I was thinking as you were speaking about Jacob's dream where he saw angels ascending and descending to heaven and uh, he said this was the, the gate the gates of heaven, the gate of heaven and uh, I was wondering just over the weekend why was it that this was a time that Jacob was fearing his brother Esau and what was it about this time for Jacob that made the, this dream possible or that gave gave um, the possibility for this dream. Um, this is one of the, the lesser lights, if you will. Yes, yes. Yes. The, the lesser light brings in us or brings to our consciousness via dreams all kinds of things that we ignore when the rational mind is governing so it's like kind of a dark chamber that collects all kinds of things that the rational minds ignore the rational mind is like the number one yes and the non-rational or the lesser light is like zero and while we rest the non-rational or the moon in us throws at us all kinds of images to relieve us yes and if in the rational mind jacob is worrying that his brother isa wants to assassinate him comes the dream yes rodrigo I just try to follow thank you very much Sometimes, Shelton, 
when we experience uh, hardships specifically in the rational mind or in what we see so to speak in, in the daily daily lives there is the sun is shining outside but we struggle we experience hardships sometimes uh, specifically in those periods very important dreams are coming and they can illuminate us for years because they manage to speak the unspeakable So, you know, Jacob had a dream, and this is also what I wondered um, about as I was looking at Jacob's life this weekend. Jacob had a dream, and he saw angels ascending and descending. And then, of all of Jacob's sons, Joseph had a dream. And I was wondering, did Joseph, kind of, if you will, inherit his father Jacob's uh, proclivity or tendency to dream? Is this something that also is passed on from generation to generation? Or if not, what is, is there a connection between the dream of um, uh, the dream of Jacob and the dream of Joseph? Thank you for the question. They both uh, share like a, a middle line. Then, and the tree of life is in the midst of the garden, so they have the perspective of being in the middle. This is what enables both of them dreaming. This is to answer your first question. This is the connection in a way the father holds the sun, the value, this is now I go for mathematics, the value of Jacob is 7 times 26, Joseph is 6 times, so the 7 holds the 6 together, there is a relation of love between them, this is why the Bible says that Israel loved Joseph more, I mean, more than all of his children, because we have 7, the 7 of Jacob, 7 times being, and Joseph is six time being, seven plus six is love. Their names represent love. Both of them are standing in the middle line. This is what um, enables them dreaming. Because dreaming is the mode that balance our rational mind. So both of them, they have the ability to speak like rational cognitive speech but they also integrated the dreams the zero the moon aspect and they have completion the father and the son so and in Thomas Mann's book Joseph and his brothers he describes how Jacob recognized this ability in Joseph and is very very cautious with him very cautious Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing, Eddie. That book is called Joseph and His Brothers by Thomas Mann, you said? Yes, there are four books. Uh, it's a challenge in terms of uh, emotional. Uh, I, I'm, emotional is not the right uh, word to use it, but the depth of relationships between humans i never read such a story or such a book when the author managed to express such a deep relation between people i, I never read such a thing and and this is why though mm -hmm. it's the best ever uh, written book in german language nobody relates to it mm -hmm because they they relate to other uh, famous books of Thomas Mann all all the rest of them they have profiles all over the place 
but not this one because this one he really went deep uh, to the relations between humans things that people do not want to look at at all mm-hmm. but he managed to do it it's a work of 15 years 15 years mm-hmm. He wrote this wow. book. Wow. That's amazing. Sometimes you when you what? read... Yes, yes, Shelton? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Sometimes when you read one uh, sentence, you, you're thrown back and you cannot continue reading. It's just description of relations between people about yeah. honesty and truth. And, uh... Yeah, that's... Uh, it, what, what I find interesting is Jacob... Or Joseph, uh, when he had his dream, he he shared it with his brothers, you know. And the Bible says that his brothers hated him for the dream. And they said, behold, here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him and see what happens to his dream. And I, I don't know, was it Joseph being um, maybe um, not understanding the the level of jealousy or the level of envy or not understanding his brothers maybe it was his immaturity or that he did the right thing but his brothers couldn't get beyond the 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 realm of the earth that you talk about often right we talk about the earth and the spirit realm um don't know but i, I just find that interesting um Just the life of Joseph and particularly this, the, this part, what was it about? And I'll, I'll get the book, but what was it about Joseph's sharing of the dream that so, uh, I know he got the coat of many colors, but what was it about the sharing of the dream that really uh, ignited within the brothers such hatred of their, of their, their own brother? This is interesting because Thomas Mann describes it in his book. This is his perspective. He describes the brothers of Joseph as illiterate people. They cannot read. They cannot write. They cannot do mathematics. Joseph can read, can write, can do very intricate mathematics. Felipe noticed this. He asked me so many questions about mathematics in the book. And... It's not now about the Bible in a way floats the, the story of dreams that in this realm he is different from them because he's dreaming and he's sharing his dreams. But Thomas Mann brings it how simple his brothers were running on the fields with sheep, with, uh, you know, like sheep so so. And he is the one who is incapable of, of cognitive speech. He can tell a story. He can do very intricate mathematics. And on top of this, he's also dreaming and he understands the dreams. He understands the message from the zero, from the moon. And all of those things together, being able to speak right, being able to write, to do mathematics, to dream, to integrate your dream for years ahead, All of those qualities are jumping his brothers, his ignorant brothers, from the roof. How can it be that a person has such a complete perspective? Because his brothers, like the Zohar describes the brothers, they were holding like bipolar. Each one was holding another pole and they were fighting each other, like in politics. But he is in the middle, and they could not tolerate him by being simply in the middle. This is why the, the father loves him, because he is in the middle. He never tends to do extreme things like the, the rest of his brothers. So what, what I hear you saying is that he, he had... He had a gift, and he had a lesser light that was shining so brightly that perhaps the, some of the, the lesser lights of the darkness of the brothers were 
repelled by it. They were, it was unsettling to them. He, he made them uncomfortable because his gift was so radiant. It was so um, um, apparent. It was so apparent. Um, I, I, I have a friend who says that she believes that the not love but jealousy and envy um, often rule or dominate the world in its relations between human beings. And I wonder what you think about that, Etty, because right now you're talking about the greater light and the lesser light. And we don't often talk about the darkness, right? Um, I wonder what you think about that, that, that thought. Thank you for the question. People do not like people who dream. People, most people do not admit that they dream. And then if they don't admit or remember that they dream, it means they don't relate to dreams in general. If somebody comes in their surrounding and says that he has a dream, they immediately feel feel threatened because in themselves they don't relate to dreams and dream is something that we cannot control this is why people so are so afraid from dreams because we cannot control what comes up in a dream what comes from the unconscious so what people do usually they take a sleeping pill at 10 in the evening they sleep until 7 6 in the morning they don't remember anything and then they wake up like machines and do mechanical this is the rational mind part of it so they don't have to deal with the dark part part in themselves if we would as people integrate more the language of dreams that comes to us, to our friends, life would be better with less hate. Because it is the zero button of dreams that reset the whole system and creates beautiful communication. And if we don't use this button, this dream button, it's no good. This is a very special dream I'm reminded of, of Carl Jung that he had, I think, in the 20th century, I don't recall the particular year, but he had a very interesting dream. And later on, this dream forecast the second or first, I don't recall, I think it was 1912, if I remember, but you can correct me. And in his dream, already, the future appeared. So, but people do not like to take into consideration also dream. People sit with family budgets. They made all kinds of graphs, how much we use electricity and waters, the water bill. They send us all kinds of graphs. Everybody's really pure kind farming data showing us with graphs, with parabolot and so. But don't mention dream. No, you're threatening kind in us. It's a threat. And what happens is in general when a lot of people together. This is what happened also in Europe 100 years ago. Approximately so many people do not take into consideration their lesser light, their dreams, everything, and they don't integrate them or they don't admit even that they exist. What happens is after a while that all this dark mass that they accumulate as people, as individuals, comes together into one account and then you see something which is unthinkable 
as fascism to its all colors and shapes. This is what happens when people do not integrate the zero or the lesser light or dreams in their lives. Yeah, this is, uh, thank you, Etty. I, I think that uh, it, it, what you're saying reminds me of uh, the prophecy of Joel said, that in the latter days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your young men will dream dreams and your old men will see visions. Even on my handmaids and, and servants will I pour out my spirit. And then I think about the, if God is the giver of dreams and our our resistance to them is also our resistance to the spirit of God. If this is if we are in the in the period of the prophecy of Joel. But also I, I think about there was a poet um in Langston Hughes and one of the lines of his poem said, Never cease to dream, for without dreams life is like a broken winged bird that cannot fly. That dreams and disinterpreted dreams in and of themselves are are the basis for us being able to, if you will, go beyond what you were talking about, that routine, the routine, the routineness of uh, of, of uh, life's daily, daily activities, the mundane aspects of life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elton. And thank you, everyone, for participating in this beautiful conversation that starts, in a way, a new cycle of reading the Torah, of reading Bereshit, and new life are coming to all of us now. And with this blessing of new life, I would like to wish everyone a wonderful week and most wonderful year. Shalom, shalom. Thank you very much. Shalom, 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 shalom everyone. Thank you, Etty. Thank you, Rodrigo. Thank you. Shalom, shalom. shalom. Thank you.